Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Bernie. Uh, I'm a mentor, concept art mentor at CG Spectrum. I hope you guys had a good week or a good weekend. And today we are going to finish this uh, goblin concept up. And I'll just show you real quick uh, what I did to it uh, from the previous week. So we were at this about, I guess, uh, two weeks ago. And yeah, last week we just added in all the details or most of them. <clears throat> and actually, uh, let me go back. So what I did was I bumped up the uh, contrast on it I fixed the forehead area a little bit, or I just adjusted it. And then I uh, used levels here to bump up the contrast. So anyways, I'm going to be working directly on top of uh, the changes I made here with the contrast. I'm just going to be painting directly over it. How's everyone doing? Cool, so uh, let's get started. All right, so for now, I'm going to add details on uh, the loincloth area and uh, probably the fish, uh, fishing pole as well. And then I'll work on the fish down there. Hey Pietro, doing good. Hey, uh, Ash Ashawat, <laughs> make Sonic. Hey Geek Prototype, you're working on a villain, awesome. Uh, where are you from Pietro? Yeah, it's been pretty draining, right? I mean, I thought I was doing fine or, you know, usually I feel like I'm, you know, it's not taking that much an effect on me. Uh, that is, uh, you know, the lockdown and everything we're going through. But yeah, like it's been almost a year now, right? So it's it's pretty um, depressing. <laughs> like it kind of creeps up on you. You're guessing he's Italian, Greek. Are you Greek then? <laughs> uh, all right, let's add some uh, base colors in here. too reddish it's a little better Oh, you're Italian, but why is your name Greek Prototype? Or no, sorry, it's not Greek, sorry. My bad. It's Geek Prototype. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Oh, you're from Northern Italy, Pietro? Okay, cool. Hey, congratulations on finishing up your studies with uh, CG Spectrum, Pietro. Yeah, it's, it is hard, um, I guess, like, yeah, some people work better with others, right? Um, yeah, when I was in college, I used to always go over to, you know, friends' houses to work with, uh, uh, you know, just to do our homework or projects together. Um, or just meet up at school, you know, do late nights, like all-nighters working on projects. That is helpful for sure. Uh, just to see, like, what other people are working on, right, and stay motivated. At the same time, um, if you see it in a different way, 
there's less distractions being quarantined, right? <laughs> you don't have like certain people like bugging you to hang out and, you know, distracting you from work. So in that sense, it helps, right? Uh, geek prototype. Yeah, I'm Korean American. I lived in Korea for about five years from third grade to eighth grade. So I'm familiar with Korean culture and you know what, what it's like in Korea, but I'm very much American <laughs> the way I think and everything. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> Oops, all right, let's add some color to this. Just using a multiply layer here to add some more darker values. And some more values to this uh, hook. We'll just add some more value to the fish as well while I'm at it. We'll just darken everything up and then build up on it. I think I'm gonna make the fish some kind of reddish orangish color just to make it pop. We'll do a multiply. Oh, Geek Prototype, you're moving to Seoul? Yeah, I lived in Seoul uh, during those five years. Uh, I'm sure it's changed a lot. I was there and um, I moved there when in 1988 at the time uh, when I was in third grade. That was during the Seoul Olympics. I don't know if you guys remember that. You have to be pretty old to remember, but um, yeah, they were having uh, the Seoul Olympics uh, in 1988 and um, that's when Korea was really developing a lot. You could see a lot of the old world and the modern world like all combined together in the city, which was awesome to see. Um, I personally like that. You know, I don't like seeing just a completely modern city, but I like seeing the combination of, you know, remnants of the old, you know, villages or like the older Korean style, right? Uh, buildings or uh, structures, right? Um, but I'm sure, or from what I've heard, it's changed so much over the decades, right? Um, why, why do you plan on going to Korea, by the way, or to Seoul? Oh, so you said, oh, sorry, I'm just reading. <laughs> I'm asking these questions as I'm reading uh, the comments. You said the main goal is to meet other artists. Yeah, uh, hmm, not sure. I mean, if the main goal is to meet other artists, I don't know, how, what's your plan on meeting other artists in Korea? 
you notice that Asian artists are usually the best, or at least for your own vision of things. Whenever you see uh, on art station a work you love, it's always Korean. <laughs> well, I would say Asians in general, or I guess Koreans, uh, you're talking about Koreans right now, their, their foundational work, their foundational um, art skills are very strong because that's how they're trained. Like they're trained to render things, right? They're trained to uh, draw things from life really, really well. Like they have a very high standard of rendering um, and um, you know, just drawing skills from life. Um, and it's the same in China. Like when you look at Chinese artists, uh, their foundations are extremely strong. Um, yeah, when I was in the, when I was um, going to high school in the US, um, I noticed that a lot of the artists, their, their rendering skills were very weak compared to uh, Korea. Because again, I, I lived in Korea for uh, five years. Hey, Carlos. But in, in terms of creativity, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there obviously there's creative artists everywhere you go, but um, yeah, I don't know if that's, if that's your main goal to just meet other artists. I'm not sure if uh, going to Seoul, Korea is the best thing unless you have a specific plan or you know certain artists that you're going to meet up with or artist groups that you're going to be a part of. Uh, sometimes Koreans could be very exclusive. Um, sometimes it depends, of course, but yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't move without knowing anyone or having connections with some people. Like, try to make connections with uh, some Korean artists that live in Seoul, like, online first, right? Build a relationship with them, and then think about moving to Korea would be my recommendation. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't think you want to just move anywhere without knowing people. Do you speak any Korean by any chance? I know, I know a lot of people that learn uh, Korean through watching Korean dramas and just Korean uh, TV shows or movies. Or I guess uh, K-pop, right? Some people listen to a lot of K-pop and then uh, that's how they familiarize themselves with the Korean language. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Jessica. Oh, you're studying Korean? Awesome. Yeah, so uh, when I went to Korea as a, as a third grader, I didn't know much Korean at all, even though I was Korean American. I only knew like the basic things like, hi, hello, thank you, stuff like that. Um, but Korean was pretty easy to learn, I would say. Uh, it's one of those languages that are not difficult at all to learn. It's pretty simple. But you don't like K-pop? <laughs> I didn't like it for a while either, but 
for some reason i'm into it right now <laughs> i have no idea why because i'm old but um i don't know sometimes i like listening to it uh, it depends on what kind of k-pop of course but there's some that i like um yeah hey margaret yeah i'm back on the goblin trying to finish it i didn't want to finish it but you know because um i just get bored easily <laughs> i want to move on to something else but you know i gotta uh, practice just finishing things so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna force myself to finish it and yeah for sure today will be the last day i work on this and next week we'll work on something new but yeah, some people have a very difficult time finishing something and I'm one of those people naturally. Uh, I, it's not natural for me to, I mean, finish something. Uh, I'd rather work on many variations. Um, but yeah, we do have to develop that skill to complete something. So that's what I'm practicing right now. Oh, you guys don't have a lot of uh, art jobs in Italy? Well, there's a lot of remote opportunities that are popping up now. A lot of game companies are going remote, so look out for those. And you want to learn from Korean artists? Yeah, you can do that. Hey, Sonny. BTS ruined it all? <laughs> yeah, I'm not really familiar with all the, uh, or I guess I should say, I don't know, like, I'm not really into the artists themselves, right? With K pop. I just listen to the music. <laughs> I know some K-pop artist names and stuff like that, but I don't follow anything. I'm not like a fan or anything. I just like listening to their music once in a while. Just cause it's kind of upbeat or fun to listen to. But yeah, in general, I don't remember any celebrity names or unless, you know, they're very popular. I don't remember it. I don't follow it. That's why I guess I don't remember it. But I like K-pop music videos too. Like I like watching some of the K-pop music videos just because I feel like they do a good job, like in terms of like the visuals and things like that. I think it's pretty interesting. There's, they're pretty creative sometimes. Of course it depends. But usually they have low budgets, right? Compared to US music videos, they're, they're working with a very low budget, but they still do some pretty interesting things with the, the uh, music videos. That's why I like watching them just to see like what kind of creative angles they're using. Yeah, they have really interesting visuals. And again, again, they know how to make things look fun, which I like. Gaming and gaming, well, I guess it's any entertainment you do. Like you need to know what is fun to people, right? Whether it's gameplay or whether it's the art style, you want to be familiar with or understand what makes something look fun. and appealing, of course. <clears throat> hey, David. Jessica, you're asking what course or book do you recommend to study color theory? Oh. 
It's that uh, book by James Gurney. It has some color theory in it. What is it? I always forget the name. Here it is. It's color and light. I don't know if I could show it actually. Maybe I shouldn't show anything. It's uh, Color and Light by James Gurney. So look it up on uh, online, Color and Light. <laughs> Patrick, you're asking, can I explain the difference between the Korean guys, like the fundamental training? Oh, uh, Well, if I, I can't show any images here, so if I could try to explain it verbally. Um, they just do a lot of life drawing, like drawing from life, anything like a vase, flowers, um, a room, anything that you see in life, obviously the figure or even sculptures, even something as simple as a plaster like sphere or a cube. You know, those white plaster like renderings that people do. It, they're, they're basically copying what they used to do in, uh, I think it's f Europe, right? Like the, it's, they adopted the um, traditional uh, rendering um, method of from Europe, like where they use uh, those plaster like uh, sculptures or casts, right? To do uh, studies off of. And so they, they do extensive uh, life drawing studies and and that's all they focus on for years right uh, they don't do any concept stuff they just do all that training and that's why their base uh, for rendering or just obs observational drawing is very very strong and you know how like westerners back in the day at least in america they used to like rub like they used to draw with graphite and then rub with their finger or like in one of those um, paper like pencil nub thingies and they would rub the graphite around. Asia, in Korea, you never do that. You have to render everything with just the pencil stroke, right? With cross hatching. Uh, so you don't like goof, you like, you don't, to, to me, or not, sorry, not to me, but to a lot of Koreans, that would be like cheating or it would seem kind of like nonsensical to do that, to rub the graphite in. Um, they describe everything with line with cross hatching. So it's more accurate basically in my opinion. Geek, uh, you're saying they basically don't sleep, but uh, yeah, they're trained like that. So even with, um, you know, just academics, uh, all throughout elementary school up till high school before they get to college, all Koreans are trained to study, study very, very hard. They don't have a life, they just study. That's all they do. You're right, uh, Geek Prototype. Uh, they, they're, tr they're very disciplined in the way they study something, whether it's art or whether it's, uh, you know, science or anything, right? Yes, the amount of pressure you would not believe. You, you, Westerners would not understand the general pressure on Korean students. Yeah, of course, Westerners work, there are, People all over the world that work hard, right? There are people like that, that understand hard work ethic. Uh, but I'm speaking in general, like the masses, right? Uh, Koreans, and I think in China, it's like that too. Um, they, they study very, very, very hard. Yeah, Patrick, I saw some kind of behind the scenes, like, thing for Blackpink. I mean, I saw like the thumbnail or something for it somewhere. Maybe it was on YouTube, but I didn't actually watch it, but maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, I didn't see it. Oh yeah, they're built by hand, the environments. That's cool. Sometimes my values here get very, a little too subtle. So I gotta remember to kind of bump them up a little bit.
<clears throat> Anyways, we'll, we'll move on to the earrings. I'm going to make them slightly grayish, like a brownish gray. Maybe that's too gray. Hey, gaming souling. Hey, Margaret. Yeah. So it is similar in China, huh? Yep. That sounds like Korea too. Um, yeah, it's very the culture is very very different like the edu educational system there is very very different in asia especially like korea and china i think so if it, if you don't fit into that educational system right uh where you just put your head down and study and memorize everything then you're not going to do well there like if you're not like the the um bookworm type or, you, or the uh, academic type, you're not going to do well, <laughs> most likely. And obviously for me, I was more the creative type, so I didn't do well. So I'm glad that my parents uh, moved back here uh, after, what is it? We moved back here after I finished eighth grade, so I started ninth grade here um, when I returned. So yeah, it was a good decision by my parents to move back. I don't know what I would be doing in Korea. Or maybe I'd be like an art genius, like uh, what Geek Prototype's talking about if I stayed in Korea. <laughs> I don't know. I actually never got trained in art in, while I was in Korea. I wanted to, but my parents never let me. And it's one of, it's related to what Margaret's talking about where they're like, well, you don't have time to do art, you gotta study, you know? You wanna do art? Are you out of your mind? You're gonna be poor if you do art. <laughs> no one's gonna respect you if you do art, so. Uh, they never sent me to, um, they have like these little uh, art schools, um, like after, after school, like art programs. Uh, that some students go to and I always wanted to go to it but my parents never let me they made me do piano instead I hated piano but they made me do it for three years and all I did was act like I was practicing but I was really really reading a uh, Dragon Ball comics uh, while the teacher was away <laughs> So I don't know why my parents made me do something I hated and didn't make, let me do something I really was interested in. But again, it does make sense. It's because of the, the that Korean culture. They thought they'd be doing something wrong if they didn't help me to focus on academ academics, my academics. So I missed out uh, on that Korean art training. But, um, yeah, I remember like every time I'd be, or, or a lot of days when I'd be walking home from uh, school, I would pass by that uh, art 
school. And I would just look in because they had glass windows, like large glass windows. So you could see, look inside and see everyone drawing or painting. And I would just stand there for a few minutes and watch everyone drawing and try to see what they're doing. Yeah. Geek Prototype saying, I can't decide whether it is a Western or Asian style the best. On one hand, Westerners will have more troubles to study in the long term, but then Asians are more stressed even in Japan. Yeah, art style wise, I don't know if you can say there is a best style, right? It's, they're just different, in my opinion. Um, there's pros and cons to both or you know I don't know if there's you could say they're cons but it's just everyone likes different things you know and it's good that there's different styles I think um, yeah so it's really up to are you saying that you're not sure if you like the Western style better or Asian style better these days they combine them right in concept art or whatever type of art, like the combination of Asian or anime influenced uh, art styles with Western. Those look, are popular these days, right? Oops. Yeah, it would have been the next Kim Jong E, huh? I know. I missed out. Margaret, you're saying your older sister was raised with intense study mentality and she was quite good at drawing too, but now she says she has no creativity anymore. Yeah, it kills your creativity. If you're trained that way, it's a different mentality, right? One is uh, quite linear in the way they say you got to study these textbooks, right? The tests are going to be based off of these textbooks. So that's all you got to look at. That's very linear. Um, while um, creative minds, you, again, everything has to be developed, right? And um, my sister, I have an older sister. She was good at drawing too. She actually inspired me to want to draw. Um, but at the same thing, like you're saying, Margaret, uh, she was very good academically. Even when she moved to Korea, to Korea she did very, very well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, she didn't get into any kind of a creative field after that. <laughs> Again, I think it kills your uh, creativity if you're trained a certain way. Sometimes it can. And a lot of uh, even professional artists in the gaming industry from China are coming to the US uh, so that they can be trained with more of the uh, creative aspects of concept art. Because again, a lot of them, their uh, they're foundational skills, their rendering skills, their illustrative skills are very, very strong, but then their creative skills are not as strong, right? So they're purposely coming here to the US to be trained in that with that aspect. And again, I think it has to do with uh, the way they're, they were trained again. It, it affects the, their creativity, the way they think. Uh, it's like they feel like there's a right or wrong. If I speak generally, again, please take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But speaking generally, um, you know, I think if you're trained that there is a right or wrong answer, 
you fear getting something wrong like oh can i try brainstorming like these ideas but you hesitate because you feel like you're going to get something wrong you want the answer to be right but you know with creative people the way you should think kind of is like there is no right or wrong in the beginning at least you just you're just exploring there's nothing wrong with exploring you know But with academics, there is a right or wrong. With like your testing, there is a right or wrong, right? So it's hard to break out of that mindset, I think. And just letting your mind flow and be childlike in the way you think, at least. I think that's something that's missing a lot too. Just being, being able to play in your mind with ideas instead of limiting or shooting down those ideas too quickly, right? And again, that all that stuff is developed over time. It's not like you're just a creative genius like right off the bat, right? You have to develop that kind of thinking. You had to play piano too, Margaret? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't play piano at all right now. My kids play with the keyboard a little bit just because they were interested, but I do not encourage them to play the piano at all. What are you talking about, Sir Fry? Um, the issue with that is it implies money is everything. What does that mean? What? Did I maybe I missed something? Hey, TWY Animations, what do you want me to draw? Draw uh, whatever you want to. Draw a character. Draw a goblin. Draw a f draw a glob goblin with me if you want your own version of it. Geek prototype, you're saying if you th you think if you were trained in the agent studying method, you would have been drawing far better right now. Uh, maybe. Not sure. Um. Yeah, but you could start now. I think there's a lot of online. Uh, tutorials right for that asian style you're talking about or asian studying method um you could also look up uh tb Choi on artstation she's in korea i believe it's tb as in boy Choi c h o i i believe on artstation she's a good instructor hey rush back Yeah, Patrick, you're saying you also try to study and copy a lot of things only from photographs, though. Also having a hard time being creative. Yeah, so um, everyone's different, obviously, and uh, we all start from a different uh, skill point, right? If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you got to start somewhere. Sometimes, I mean, I still do a ton of uh, studies from reference. Um, really that's the your st foundation has to be strong uh, so those things will help make things believable like your creative ideas more believable right uh, but in terms of creativity uh, sketch a lot doodle ideas just practice brainstorming and doodling don't worry in my opinion don't worry about your drawing quality when you're sketching in your sketchbook for ideas because uh, that's just another barrier right for you to be creative um, that's another barrier again to think oh am i this drawing isn't pretty enough right when it has nothing to do with that when you're trying to think of ideas right uh, that these are just brainstorming like when you're doing thumbnails 
But again, it could be a barrier if you're you're worried of concerned about your drawing quality or if it looks pretty or not, right? So just doodle, sketch, doodle. Keep that sketchbook separate, you know what I mean? Or keep, if you're doing it on your iPad or whatever, just keep it all separate, like mentally, right? This, these are just brainstorming sessions or whatever. Uh, I gotta keep moving forward with this guy. <laughs> I like talking with you guys, so I'm always getting distracted here. I like chatting, hearing your questions and comments. I'm just gonna go along with the little sketch design I have with the scales here, so I don't have to overthink it. It looks decent enough, meaning like it's gonna catch light, which will make it look somewhat interesting. These little ropes going through his nostrils. Yeah, uh, Geek Prototype is TB Troy, that's correct. At this point, I'm gonna add some. Hmm, what should I... I'm gonna add some color variation to the fish, and I will do the same with the uh, goblin in a second. But I'll start with the fish first, and I'm just choosing a different hue to add some slight color variation to it. I'll make the body more reddish or magenta-ish compared to the scales. I mean the thicker scales on its head and spine area. It might be too subtle so I might have to bump it up a bit. Patrick, you're asking, isn't the Feng Zhu way of learning pretty much the same? Like drawing all the time and pushing yourself to the, to the max? I watched him a lot on my artist, artistic beginnings. Uh, I'm not sure what the Feng Zhu way is. Uh, I would imagine it'd be similar. I've heard things about the school, right? And how he runs things. That is very intense. Uh, I haven't, again, heard the details, but I just heard it's super intense. Um, so yeah, I mean, really, um, if you just work hard and train yourself and be super disciplined about how you're studying, like again, just drawing from life and all that every day, like for hours a day, then yeah, you're going to get better. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know if that's an Asian style, but, uh, or I don't think that's a, any style, right? That's just being disciplined. And Sir Fry, you're saying, oh, earlier you mentioned your parents not wanting you to grow up and do art because you would be poor. I was just saying that's unfortunate. Oh, sure. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, to be honest, it does... Um, I mean, I understand why my parents were saying that, because 
where they were from in Korea and their generation, it was true. It was absolutely true that majority of the artists all were pretty much poor, unless you're extremely uh, famous, right? They all they were all poor because it it's um it's not that they weren't great artists. It's because um they didn't value nobody valued art the arts in Korea at the time. So they're not going to pay you money for it. It wasn't like important at the time because they're just trying to develop as a country um yeah so no one val put value into it so i understand why they said that but they were wrong no, i'm just kidding but for sure you gotta you know i they don't know what i was willing to do in my mind right they can't read my mind or see my willingness right so they're, you know, I was kind of like a, um, I mean, I told you guys, I wasn't a great student when I was in Korea. So in their mind, they're thinking, oh, this guy don't, doesn't work that hard. So how is he going to do art, you know, and be successful at it? I think that's part of what they were thinking. But for sure, you do have to be uh, fully committed. Like for me in college, it was or before, even before college, it really was a do or die for me in terms of, you know, me wanting to pursue art. Uh, my mentality was like 100%, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make it happen um, no matter what. Um, meaning I was, yeah, comp all in. There was no, no plan B, I had no plan B. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had to make it happen and I never considered not doing it or backing out of it because again I was all in so I knew that I I mean I wasn't thinking I had to prove anything to my parents but at the same time um, you know I knew that it was up to me to make it happen or at least to position myself in, in a place where I had the best chances to be successful, right? In terms of making um, making this a career, right? Not just a hobby, but a career. Uh, you really, I just made a lot of sacrifices, um, a lot of all-nighters all that stuff Yeah, they did have my best interests in mind. It's just that sometimes parents just don't understand, right? <laughs> they still don't understand. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure I'll be the same way. I mean, we do our meaning as a parent. I, I do my, I'm trying my best to understand things, but it's just a generational difference, right? And the times that are changing so quickly. It is hard to understand sometimes.
What about you guys? Your parents are all supporting you guys with art. They're all supportive. Yeah, you're one of the lucky ones then, Patrick. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing with my kids right now. I have two boys, they're uh, six and eight years old. And um, they actually want me to teach them how to draw all the time. They always ask me, but I've up till now, I've kind of hesitated. Because again, maybe I'm doing one of those weird things with they're gonna talk about me later in the future. Like I, I am with you guys about my parents. Um, but I feel like, man, I don't want to like teach them like a method of drawing, right? Um, because I feel like that's, in my opinion, at their age, not the right thing to do. Because I don't want to say this is the way you're supposed to draw, you know what I mean? Because uh, I don't think that there is like a specific way. I want them to like explore their, you know, their own way of drawing like there is no right or wrong again i want them to feel like there is no right or wrong just have fun just draw um so I, i'm i've been hesitant i feel like it's too early to teach them like some method so i've, I've been keep, i've been telling them some pointers but keeping things very like loose you know nothing specific on how they should draw if that makes sense but it yeah i'm not sure how, how i'm supposed to go about that either at this point at their age i just again think it's too early for them Hey, Margaret. Oh, yeah. So you had to convince your or bug your parents kind of to get to that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So they can see where all your work is leading up to. Oh yeah, you're talking about my kids, Margaret. Um, could be a good time to also explore different ways for you. Yeah, like right now, all they're into is uh, they're into Pokemon right now. I think I said I told you that they're playing Pokemon Go and they collect like all these Pokemon cards. They have like millions of Pokemon cards. 
uh, they read all the comics, they watch the shows, all that stuff. What else are they into? Yeah, so they draw out some Pokemon here and there. Oh, they're into my well, my older son's into Minecraft. So yeah, the weird thing is he'll draw his characters all blocky looking like Minecraft or like in 3D kind of, right? So that's been kind of weird to see. Um, but I don't say anything. I just say cool. <laughs> but yeah, he's making his characters look all blocky like Minecraft. He's been playing Roblox too, so again, the style's kind of chunky and blocky looking. So he's influenced by that quite a bit. But yeah, I do notice that both of my sons are quite like the creative type. They lean towards the creative side. Uh, already they like coming up with different story ideas and making their own comics and drawing their own comics I mean sorry uh, yeah drawing their own comics and all that kind of stuff designing their own characters my son my older son will actually give me tips like when I'm work he comes over and sees me working He'll tell me what to do with my artwork. He'll say, if I were you, I would do this. If I were you, I would not do that. And he would give me all these little critiques. He'll say, that looks weird. <laughs> so I have a, my own art director. And then once in a while, he'll come by and say, uh, you didn't make those changes I told you to make? <laughs> yeah, hey, Margaret. Yeah, they do kind of want to be like me. Um, I guess every, most sons are like that when they... They have a good relationship with their dad they kind of want to be like their dad they'll come over and say how are you so good at drawing <laughs> and they almost get discouraged because of that which is kind of sad they'll like com they'll actually compare themselves to me like their art skill level which is weird i don't know why they do that um yeah they'll be like how are you so good like why can't i draw like you and i'm like i've been training for a long time um, but yeah. Sir Fry, your parents don't really care about what you do? As long as you, uh, stay out of trouble, right? <laughs> Alright, so I'm noodling this thing and I don't even know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna try to move forward. Actually, I'm gonna use a, uh overlay layer on here to unify that all those details <clears throat> I 
Yeah, you're 30, that's why. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to tell you what to do, stir fry. Stir fry. I almost called you stir fry. Stir fry. Uh, Zane, uh, Minecraft will help him with uh, perception. Yeah, maybe. All right, cool. So at this point, I'm trying to think about where I want to take this. Hmm. Maybe I'll add a little bit more detail on the fishing pole. I think you guys can tell I'm kind of really trying to force myself to continue working on this thing. Oh, it's not easy. Oh yeah, I was going to add some uh, color variation to uh, the goblin skin. So let's do that next. Let's try it out and see if we can improve what we have. Just going to add some warms to it. I think I'm going to try it on a multiply first. See if that works. So adding some on the knuckles and the fingertips around the hand, the knees. little bit around the belly, bottom part of it. Yeah, this will definitely make his uh, body feel a lot warmer. And it's an opportunity to create some separation between the, uh, the different uh, parts of the body. As you can see, I'm kind of just uh, warming up the bottoms of the chest here. And that creates uh, separation right from the uh, belly area. Some subtle separation. You don't want to make it too obvious, right? Under the elbows. And again, the fingertips. And of course the ears, warm that up.
Uh, by the way, uh, Margaret, have you lived in a uh, different? Have you lived in China before, or did you grow up in uh, Canada? Who's lived in a uh, different country other than where they're living at right now? Let's try the nose. Yeah, you can see the uh, adding the warms in, it's really creating some more separation, right? Between the warms and the cools. And they, so I'm purposely uh, keeping these some of these warms within a certain shape, right? So that again, it's creating separation. And of course the warms wanna pop out more uh, towards the viewer. So you can see that the ear lobes are popping out, the no tip of the nose is popping out. Uh, certain areas are popping out because I'm adding that warmth to it. The chin is popping out against the chest, again, because I'm adding that warmth. Definitely want to control it though. You don't want to overdo it in every area or keep the warmth as a, the same intensity everywhere. Uh, you want to really uh, add it in just where it needs it. Here, I'm going to add some around the uh, cheek area as well. And probably the eyes, around the eyes. little bit around the shoulders and the neck back there I'm going to zoom out and erase certain parts out where it's just too much red or too much warmth. Okay, you always been in Canada? You visit it. Cool. I think I will uh, try to bump up the values in the loincloth area. It's not reading well, the shapes or the volume of it. So I'm going to go back, try to add some highlights or just lighter lights.
Hey, thanks, Patrick. I'm trying here. I'm trying. I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to finish this guy up. <clears throat> Let's try adding some high like sharper highlights. See if that helps or not. It might not, but it's worth a try. So I'm gonna make my make the highlights a little bit cooler than the base. And I do that so it could pop out a little more against the base, which is a Again, because I've added warms, it's a little bit warmer. That might be too much. It's too gray looking. Let's just throw it in and see what happens. I don't want it to look too shiny looking, but again, um, it's hard to tell what it's eventually gonna look like. So I'm just gonna throw it in there and see and make adjustments later. I think a little bit of those highlights definitely help. Uh, you don't want to throw them down everywhere across the board on your character, of course, the same intensity. You really want to edit where you place those highlights. Uh, and again, sometimes you never know unless you try adding it in. So again, I'm just throwing it in there and here and there, seeing if it helps or not. If it doesn't help, of course I remove it. Thank you. 
we'll add some inks around the uh, eye area at the corner of the eye i don't know what you call that but you know what i'm talking about there's like a little pink area Whoops, what is that huge line? Okay. And let's go and check out some other areas where we can add some highlights. I have been avoiding rendering the uh, mouth area because I don't like the way the mouth looks. <laughs> but now's the time where I have to deal with it. I can't avoid it any longer. So let's tackle it. First, I'm going to try to just stick to what I currently have. Try to force it to work. If it doesn't work, I might try something different. I'm just adding structure back into it by adding some darks to kind of refine things a little bit for myself to give myself clear direction. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. You're giving me energy. Are you giving me dark energy or light energy? <laughs> I'm just messing around. There's power in both, isn't there? All right, let's see here. Adding some value to the teeth. Uh, to give it the form, some indication of form at least. And I'm going to do a multiply and add some color. Uh, some color for the gums.
and the lips maybe. I think the li lips I'm going to keep pretty dark. They're not going to look warm or anything. Maybe I'll add a little bit. The light will always win, but the dark is always the cool side. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dark, dark energy is always cheap and uh, easily accessible. I've used it in the past quite a bit. But trying not to these days. <laughs> all right let's add some highlights to the teeth again we're gonna be minimal about how we add to it we don't want to add too much we want to just add just enough Alright, the teeth look alright now, but um, I gotta work on those lips. By the way, you guys doing anything uh, for Thanksgiving? Or maybe is that just an American thing? <laughs> Sorry. Do do any other do any of you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? Maybe that's a dumb question, right? Or what do you guys do in your countries during this time around uh, no end of November? Anything special or unique? Margaret, yeah, so you... Oh. <laughs> Margaret, you're saying you, you knew that you missed out when you didn't sign a dark pact with that cult or the occult. Yep, you did. <laughs> I really, uh, I believe in those things. <laughs> you, you might think I'm joking, but I'm not. Um, yeah, but don't do it, don't join the dark side. Oh, you guys already had it in October? How does that work? So you guys actually do celebrate Thanksgiving in Canada, but in October. Hey, Nora. Oh, you put up Christmas lights? Awesome. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing the same thing. Um, I didn't get to doing it, but over the weekend I was thinking about it. I'm like, we should put up Christmas lights. Because every year, whenever I put it up kind of late in December, it goes by so fast. Like, you put up your Christmas lights and then like in a few weeks it's already time to take it down. So it's not that fun. So I think I'm going to put it up early this year.
Oh, in Austria, um, you guys aren't allowed to meet up or anything? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Or maybe, I don't know, I guess it depends on uh, your view of what's going on. Um, in America right now, it's kind of weird, like, we can meet up, like, legally, right? So it's legal, it's our choice, an individual's choice to meet up, <clears throat> but then the media looks down on people who actually use their freedom, right, to meet up, their choice to want to meet up with family during Thanksgiving. So that's odd, isn't it? Like, we have the freedom to do it, but then they look down on people who do, at least the media does. So it doesn't make any sense, right? Why can't people do what they want to do, right, if they have the freedom to? If they don't want people to do that, make it law, right? But why look down on people for exercising their, their rights? It makes no sense. Oh, Margaret, you leave them up until summer comes? <laughs> oh, but it do, your winters do last a lot longer, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, guys, I'm just noodling this right now. Still not sure what I, what I want to do with the lips. Oh, I see. So it's like more of a harvest. Uh, or, I'm um, sorry, uh based around or worked around, scheduled around the harvest time. That makes sense. But you guys actually eat turkey there too, Margaret? <laughs> I'm just curious. Oh, you like that it's being strict there, Patrick? You know two people who got it and with one, it was a hard time. Yeah, so in Australia, it worked out for them too. Like they were super strict, right? With the lockdown and everything. And they had, like last time I heard, they had zero cases. Um, so I guess it worked for them, right? So yeah, I mean, again, everyone has different opinions on how to uh, handle the situation, right? Um, and I respect everyone's opinion about it. Uh, at the same time, for me, my opinion is that if we're gonna, if we're gonna do a lockdown, right, we should do what Australia did, where we we go all out, like not halfway through it, right? Just lock everything down, you know, until it's all gone, right? Why uh, half-ass it, right? Why go? Why do partial lockdowns and then it'll never go away, right? Either like don't do lockdowns at all or completely lock it down so that we get rid of this thing, right? It doesn't make sense to me at least how we think partial lockdowns are going to work. I mean, it's always going to be a problem then. You had turkeys running around in, in the city? That's funny.
All right, so let's add some details in here. Yeah, oftentimes when you're adding the details and trying to figure out everything, like when you're rendering it, it'll reveal a lot of flaws, right? Because you're, again, completely trying to visualize what's going on there instead of keeping things ambiguous. So there are times when you do have to make a lot of adjustments as you're rendering it. So that's quite normal, at least it is for me. Probably don't want to start a political topic now. You're correct. I'll shut up. <laughs> I do really respect other people's opinions though. I think that's the important part. All right, let's add some highlights to the uh, beard area or mustache area. I'm gonna try to keep it kind of cool so it could stand out a little bit. Even here, I wanna try to be very careful about how much I'm adding. Um, yeah. Hey, Nay. What was your, you're asking, what was your first year as a mentor like? Was it, was teaching hard? Uh, my first year experience, it was good. I mean, it was all pretty much positive. I can't really think of a negative, to be honest. Um, yeah, the school of uh, CG Spectrum has been great. I like um, all the other, uh, the people that I work with, they're all very nice and helpful. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any negatives and there are none. You know what's cool about it is I get to, um, like when I when there's a group class, so we have one-on-ones, right? And we have group classes. The cool thing I think is like in a group class, we could have four different people from all different parts of the world meeting at the same time, right? Talking about the same, like, you know, topic like art, depending on the uh, week. I think that's cool. You know, again, people from all different walks of life, different 
uh, upbringing, different cultures coming together uh, and seeing their approaches to uh, art or concept art or illustration, right? And just talking about the same thing, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. You got people from India, people from Europe, uh, Canada, um, Australia, US. You know, not a lot of people from Asia, actually. Uh, at least not for me. I haven't had a lot of people from Asia. Uh, also different ages, right? I, I've had a younger student, much younger students, students who are just out of high school, uh, students who are much older, you know? All that stuff is very interesting to me. Like, in what setting would you have that happen, right? And in what school or educational setting would you have that, right? It's a unique uh, situation or unique setting, which I, I think is very, very cool. I think I overdid it with the highlights, guys. I didn't listen to my own advice. <laughs> but again, it's always good to kind of overdo it and then erase, like edit it, right? Erase it, knock it back. Because the details there, I just have to edit it myself. I guess I'll make him look a little older. Add some of that gray hair in there. I have a lot of gray hair myself. So I'll kind of identify with this goblin. I like fishing too, actually. Um, last couple times I went fishing with my kids. We didn't catch anything. <laughs> so they have a very bad experience of fishing. Or maybe it's a realistic perspective of fish what fishing's like right because you're not always going to catch something right but yeah they they don't want to go fish anymore i don't think All right, we'll leave that as is. I'm gonna try to mess with the lips a little bit. Uh, Patrick is asking, do some of your students now work in the industry? Uh, they do. Uh, I have a student, or I had a student, yeah, who uh, got a job in the industry. He started with um, doing some contract work with a studio, and then eventually, uh, got more work. Uh, actually, I don't know if it, he was doing full-time at the time, but he got more work. Like it was more like a half-time type gig. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was about several months ago. So I don't know, hopefully it's moved on to a full-time thing. That's usually how it works though. When you're first starting off, you'll start off as contract or freelance if they really like your work then they will hire you on on board as full time. It's kind of rare to just get a job right off the bat. Or it could be like an internship, right? Where you intern somewhere and then uh, they like you, they like working with you. So they'll hire you on as full time. That happens quite a bit as well.
I don't really like the way the eyes look either. The eyes are so important, but for whatever reason, I don't really like the way they look. I'm going to try to mess with it a little bit. I'm going to try messing with this eyebrows a little bit and maybe uh, re-entering some of the dark accents around his eyes. Let me see if there's another student uh, who works in the industry. So I had some students that did work not directly as a concept artist, but they were in the art field. Uh, but they, yeah, they were doing some work that was not concept art, but some other things. I mean, sorry, it was it was concept art, I guess, but not the style that they wanted. It was very much stylized, um, more on the um, like cartoonier side, right? But that's not what they were going for. So again, sometimes you have to do jobs that aren't exactly what you want to get to where you want to be. Temporarily, at least. Patrick, you're saying maybe one day you'll work alongside with some of your students? Yes. It's a, the industry is not that big. It could very well happen. And um, I think in general, we're always looking uh, to see if those opportunities could happen. You know, but of course, it's not like always 100% up to me. Um, who gets hired or not, right? Or who gets on an internship or not. Um, you, you guys obviously have to be, you know, qualified for the job, right? Uh, obviously. But again, I think um, mentors in general, or at least I am always on the lookout because there are internship opportunities at times um, it comes and goes, but there are mentorship or internship opportunities. That does not look right there. Uh, yeah, I'll put that in a little. You're saying the uh, industry not so big, but hard to join. Um, sure, it it's competitive. It's competitive. But once you do get a foot in the door, it changes everything.
All right, here I think I'm just gonna start refining the uh, silhouette and the edges, clean it up. So it looks completely finished somewhat, <laughs> as finished as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna be doing the boring part right now, the mindless part kind of, where I'm just cleaning it up. I say mindless, but again, this is a good opportunity to um, make the changes that are necessary that you might have missed as you're rendering this, uh, to reshape things, again, if necessary, to make this sh shape strong and your silhouette strong, and darken up certain edges if you need to. So next stream will be a new topic. Yes. What do you want it to be, Patrick? Do you have ideas? I'm not saying I'm going to do what you want me to, but, but just uh, throw it out there. Who knows? I'll consider it at the very least. Or a general idea of what you want it to be. You always say that you want to create creatures, so maybe you can do that. If you start with something new, I'll probably hop in and draw alongside. Yeah, creatures. Hmm. Sure. That sounds like fun to me. Could try that. One of the assignments that we have in uh, the concept art intro, is it the intro class? Yeah, is that, yeah, in the intro class is the uh, a hybrid character, so a half human or part human, part creature. I'll think about it, I'm not sure. We'll either try something like that or we'll just do a straight up like creature mix something different. Do you guys get all these spots too here on the side of your image? I don't know why I keep getting these spots because I keep going up, hitting the side of my uh, canvas here. 
as I'm painting or moving stuff around. <laughs> It's a little odd. He's like a looks like a grumpy old goblin. Take one animal and a job or so, like bartender frog. Oh, that sounds interesting. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll think about that. I like that. Adding some stray hairs on top of his head. A little bit on his ears. Hey, Falcon Run, quarantine has turned us all into grumpy old goblins. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that sometimes, I guess. That's funny. I'm gonna give him some uh, blackheads on his nose. Just for fun. And I'm going to kill the saturation on the fish a little bit. It's a bit too much. Let's play with levels and see what it could look like. Let's push it a little bit, the values.
Oops. Yeah, it depends on everyone's monitors, of course, but that bumps it up for me. And again, I'm going to kill the saturation on the red. It's just too much for me. And we're going to leave it at that. Thanks for joining me here. We will definitely start on something new next week. If you guys got this far, please give a like and subscribe to CG Spectrum. It helps us out a lot. And uh, I will see you guys next week, all right? Have a good week, everyone. And happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate it. All right, see you guys. Bye.